Hello, my name is Rene Cornell and I'm one of the engineers with WSP on the Gerald Desmond Bridge Replacement Project. WSP serves as the PMC on this project. This project is located in Long Beach, California and will connect the 710 freeway to Terminal Island. This project is very unique to California as it will be the first vehicular cable state bridge as well as the first time a movable scaffolding system is used. The Gerald Desmond Bridge Replacement Project, or GDB for short, is a design-build project with an estimated program cost of $1.5 billion. This project is funded by the Port of Long Beach, United States Department of Transportation, Caltrans and Metro. I'm currently standing on one of the 515-foot towers. As you can see, the size of the project is incredibly large. The size of the project is approximately a mile and a half. When completed, the project will have six lanes and a 205-foot clearance above the existing channel and will be an icon for the city of Long Beach and Southern California. Hello, my name is Matteo Diorio, and today I'll be talking about the main span bridge. The main span is a three-span cable stay bridge approximately 2,000 feet long. The center span between the two towers, one of which I'm currently standing atop of, is about 1,000 feet. The two back spans between the towers and the end vents are about 500 feet each. The superstructure will be made of steel framing with approximately 600 precast lightweight deck panels. None of the superstructure activity has started yet in terms of the erection process, but the deck panels have started passing. The superstructure will be supported on 80 cables emanating from the two towers. The towers are 515 foot tall, reinforced concrete, hollow, octagonal, modern marbles that will completely revolutionize the downtown Long Beach skyline. The towers are supported on concrete footings as well as 12 pass and drill pole piles. In addition to the towers, other substructure elements include four end vent columns. These end vent columns, two are on either side of the channel, and these are also supported on concrete footings as well as piles. Hi, my name is Jovian Santiago, and we're here at the Gerald Desmond Bridge. Um, we're standing on what we call the west approach side of the bridge. Here we have two lines that are running parallel to each other. As you can see, here we have an area where Kasten's place took place for two spans, and then we can see the transition as we move towards the MSS section. Um, the west approach um, has 114 CIDH piles, as well as 27 pile caps and 35 columns. Um, each um, line itself has 14 spans. As you can see, this is the north line, what we call it, and the south line. This one goes westbound, and the other one goes eastbound. Um, so here we can see that because we're near traffic, we had to use cast in place, and that's something that goes throughout the entire project where we have a lot of traffic or we go over um, railroads or anything near traffic we tend to use cast in place and as we get further and higher from the ground and further from the road we transition into what we use for the MSS um, it's typically straight spans and each span consists of about 215 feet so if we for 14 spans we can equal that to about 3300 feet total for the west approach all right, so we're here on top of the westbound lane for the west approach here. As you can see, this line has been fully finished uh, besides the uh, final touches for the grinding and other roadway stuff. On my left, we have the south line, which is currently being constructed. As you can see, this is where the MSS begins. Um, a little bit of difference between the north line and the south line is that the north line has a typical box girder, which includes only two exterior girders, no middle girders. And the south line has two external girders with one central girder. And it's a little bit wider because it also has a bike lane, which is about eight to 10 feet wider, making this um, have a, a bigger span. So here you can see on the south line, what I'm talking about for the girders. We see one, interior, one exterior girder, we have a central girder and then another exterior girder. Here, this is, contains only an overhang, while the south side has a bike lane where you can see it's a little bit wider than this side. Uh, and then each span basically contains two bays as you move forward on the south lane and then one bank up at the very end. Um, right now they're working, they just have poured the stem and soffit concrete. They're currently working on getting ready 
for the top deck. So here we have at the very end of the span, you can see what they're installing in some forms called the lost deck. Essentially it's the form work where the top deck reinforcement and concrete would go on. Hi, my name is Ignacio and we're on the east approach of the Gerald Desmond Bridge. The east approach is comprised by two main structures, the westbound and the eastbound approach. The eastbound line approach is comprised by six frames with a total length of approximately 3,800 feet. The eastbound approach is comprised by five frames with a total length of approximately 3,700 feet. Both the eastbound and westbound approaches combined include a total of 188 CADH piles, 44 pile caps and 63 columns. The superstructure consists of post-tensioning concrete cast in place box girder. The two west, uh, westernmost frames of both the eastbound and westbound side uh, have been constructed using the MSS uh, you can see behind my back. Uh, currently, the westbound approach has been completed and SFI has lowered the MSS and is uh, working on the heavy lift operation to turn it around and lift it to construct the eastbound approach. Hello, my name is Daniel Ramos and I am one of the engineers with WSP at the Gerald Desmond Bridge Project. All of the superstructure frames that are not being constructed using the MSS are being constructed using traditional cast-in-place on false work system. These cast-in-place concrete box girders can be built with different types of traditional false work such as with timber, Pathco towers, and even pipe columns which all have been used on this project as of today. These cast-in-place superstructures are built from the ground up using temporary structures such as concrete pad footings, steel pipe columns and I-beams, timber soffit joists and panels, and timber exterior girder and overhang formwork. Unlike the MSS, all of this temporary false work needs to be built from scratch, stay in place until the entire frame is poured with concrete and post tension, have the false work removed, and then move on to erecting the next false work for the next frame. So currently, they're working on frame B5, which is cast in place superstructure. And in the background, we see frame B4, which is also cast in place superstructure, will, which will eventually connect over a roadway, Pico Boulevard. Hey, Mateo again here. I'll give you an update on the current status of our project. We have a total of four end bent columns. We're finishing up our last end bent right now. This end bend is approximately 165 foot tall and these end bends support both the approach structures and the main span bridge. As for our towers, they're about several feet from their final elevation, so they're almost done. In terms of our precast deck panels, they're about 30% done with all of the deck panel casting. For the structural steel, this is scheduled to be delivered early next month and then SFI is planning on assembling and then erecting around the bottom of each of the towers and building up as soon as possible. The supporting brackets transfer the vertical and horizontal loads from the MSS into the piers. Three pairs of supporting brackets are required for a complete work cycle. The support brackets are placed either side of the pier and connected with pre-tensioned high strength threaded bars. The supporting brackets include working platforms for use during operation. Six launching wagons are provided with each MSS. The launching wagons are located on the top beam of the supporting bracket. The longitudinal jack connects from the center of the launching wagon to the main girder launching rail located at the center of the main girder bottom flange. The main two box girders are designed as plate structures with various thicknesses of plates. Maximum dimensions of the box section is 16 feet high by 6.5 feet wide. These beams transfer the load from the superstructure to the support brackets. Rails are welded to the bottom webs for moving on roller bearings. During concrete placement, the MSS is supported in the front by four hydraulic cylinders and suspended in the rear from the suspension gallows. The front and rear nose trusses are lightweight extensions of the main girder. They are required for longitudinal launching of the MSS. There are a total of four nose trusses, two front noses, and two rear noses. All four noses are connected with a vertical hinge to the main girder. This hinge can be adjusted manually with the mechanical jack when launching through a horizontal curve. 
The Gerald Desmond Bridge MSS has two different sections forming the transverse beams or trusses. The central section, spanning between the two main girders and the cantilever brackets fitted to the outside of the main girders. Before the MSS can be side shifted, the PT bars connecting both sides of the transverse beams along the center line of the bridge are removed. The MSS can then be opened until the transverse beams can pass the concrete piers. The suspension gallows transfers the loads from the rear of the MSS to the previously cast section of the bridge deck. At each end of the suspension gallows are pin jointed connectors for 14 to 18 1.4 inch diameter threaded PT bars which pass through voids in the bridge deck and connect to the MSS main girders. Two hydraulic cylinders placed directly above the webs of the bridge deck transfer the loads into the previously cast section. After concrete placement, curing, and stressing of the post-tension tendons, the main girders are lowered on the brackets by the main jacks at the suspension gallows. The joints in the middle of the transverse beam system are released and the main girders are moved transversely into position where the transverse beams can pass the piers. The MSS is ready for launching. The launching operation to the next concreting position is to be carried out. The two main girders are moved independently to the next span. During the launching operations, the suspension gallow is moved to its next position. The two girders are moved transversely and joined in the middle of the transverse beam system. The main girders are raised to the concreting position by the rear jacks. At this point, two hydraulic cylinders transmit the loads at the rear from the suspension gallows to the previous span superstructure. The formwork is adjusted by means of the screw jacks and the adjustable supports. Once formwork has been adjusted to the required profile, rebar placement can start. Prefabrication of bent cap, hinges, and web blisters reduce the time required for this operation. Concrete placement methods vary depending on the height of the span. In the lower spans, SFI used concrete boom trucks set on the ground. When these trucks no longer reached the superstructure, a permanent concrete placing boom was installed in the nose girder of the MSS, which could be connected through a slick line to a concrete pump set on the previous span. When parallel line is completed, concrete placement can be done from boom trucks located on the adjacent structure. After stripping the stem and soffit forms, installation of the lost deck can start. SFI used for this purpose reusable panels supported on extendable steel columns. This system, typically used in buildings, not common in bridge construction, provided great results. Once the lost deck is up, rebar placement for the deck can start. Placement similar to the stem and soffit, final grade is achieved by means of a bid well. Once the draped tendons, full span length, are stressed and elongations are approved by the EOR, the MSS can be lowered. After lowering, stressing of the short tendons going over the bend cap is required. Once all stressing operations are completed, MSS opening and launching operation can start. Typically, for the first and last span of any structure constructed using an MSS, an heavy lift operation is required to lift or lower the MSS into concreting position. This next video shows the transportation of MSSB from the north approach to the south approach, followed by another video showing the MSSA moving from the north to the south approach.